Welcome to Designing a Quilt and Playing with Tiling Scenes, part of the Creating with Rachel series, which I'm hoping will be a series. It won't, won't be just a one-off thing, but we will have to see. So what um, we're doing is the All Systems Glow Quilt. And the plan for this lesson is we're going to create quilt blocks, custom quilt blocks, and our, the quilter program with our Bernina software. We're going to design a quilt. We'll insert some embroidery designs, edit the embroidery designs to fit, and then we'll also talk about resizing tiling designs and how we can combine some tiling designs. So the embroidery collections I'm featuring, or that inspired me, um, All Systems Glow, which is from OESD, and then Quilters Building Blocks, um, which is from Scissor Tail Stitches, which is also OESD. It's their sister brand. Um, so this is All Systems Glow. It uses the, I think it's called Poly Glow. Conveniently have it right next to me. Um, it's Mettler, yeah, Mettler Poly Glow. I love this thread. Uh, it normally sews in white and then it glows in the dark. Um, so one of these, the sun is the center of my quilt block. And then I also did some bibs that were terry cloth with some line designs that are in the collection. That didn't work as well as I would like because the bibs were terry cloth. So even with the topper, um, the stitches sank too much into it once it was washed. And since I have learned that bibs get washed all the time, it's still super cute, but not quite what I intended. Probably satin stitches would have worked better. But I'm really enjoying this collection. And then we have uh, Quilters Building Blocks. So this is a piecing in the hoop collection that they came out with. It has 11 different blocks, um, types of blocks, and there's two sizes. And they label their sizes as five inches and seven inches, but that's the raw size. They actually finish at four and a half and six and a half. And that's where I had issues. As you can hear me, take a drink. Um, so some of the designs for my quilt needed at least a five inch finished block, which is how I interpreted the, um, the instructions at the first. And uh, so we're gonna have to change it. Now, the picture I have, this is a table topper I made. They, um, OESD did a mystery embroidery along where um, you used the quilter's building blocks and you made what they called a jogger. And I took it to the next level and made three times as many blocks as I was supposed to. And this is how I put them together. Um, this will most likely have a border around it uh, of either dark blue or red, but I did piece this together myself, but now it is at my mom's house to have the border put on. Partially because I couldn't find fabric I wanted, because I just used three fat quarters on this, and, uh, partially because I got most of it done, and I, I was, I had used all my mental energy on it, so it needed to go, uh, be somewhere else for a little bit. I really like how it looks, though. Um, so we can modify blocks. This is actually a flying goose block and a rectangle together to make a square. And the center one is the original sizes, um, for the flying goose and the rectangle. And the one on the left and the one on the right are ones that I have changed. I made some bigger and I made some smaller. And you can do that from, um, in our software itself. Hi, Teresa. Um, there are different things you have to do to make sure it works out. I'm mostly, um, in the lesson going to talk about, um, sizing up because that's what I needed to do on the quilt. The small pinwheel was more of an afterthought just to like, Hey, will this work this way too? And it kind of does. There's just a few things like, um, moving seams around so that you have the right seam allowance. So this is a better picture of the block I held up earlier. Um, and it's going to be the center of my quilt. And one of the things I really like is the star fabric that's the background actually will glow in the dark. 
So not only will the center with the sun glow in the dark, but the stars around it will glow. Um, this block type is actually part of um, the quilter's building block um, instructions or their sample quilt. It has one like this on it. What I liked is it kind of looks like it's a paper and there's or kind of a cross with uh, the edges folded in, ooh, folding in. But I was just having fun with it. Hi, Carol. Um, so let's just go on and design a quilt and then we'll look at um, how to do a few other things as well. So let's flip over to the embroidery software. And I have lots of things open. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is open up Quilter. So I'm going to go to the Applications Toolbox. And we're going to go to the Quilter program. And it will open fairly quickly. I'm going to turn off the grid because it um, doesn't seem to be showing very well. And I am going to go to the Quilt Layout button and click on it. I do want a rectangular quilt. And... I didn't write this down, so now I have to sit here and think. I want nine blocks across, nine blocks down, and what I'm actually, I'm gonna make this what I'm actually doing, and my finished size is actually five and a half, both width and height, because I have squares. We're gonna say okay. Now, it is very possible, I know that some of these blocks are in here, it's probably under classic or not because I can't find it right away um but I could probably find the blocks but one of the things I like to do is to make my own blocks so I am going to go to file manage blocks and on uh, this computer I haven't made any custom blocks before so I'm going to right click over in the library manager side and say new library and you can name it whatever you want I normally just name it Rachel so I know it's mine. Then when I click on it, I'm gonna click over in the big spot and I'm gonna say new category because I do like to categorize my blocks. I have issues, I know. And um, I'm gonna name this Quilters Building Blocks because that's the collection it's coming from. And I could put more in this folder if I wanted to do all 11 blocks. I'm gonna right click again and I'm gonna do a new block. And I'm going to call it HST, so it's a half square triangle. And I'm going to double click on it. And now I'm in the design area. By default, it makes the size of the block 10 inches by 10 inches. And it will just scale with you. So you don't have to necessarily say, no, this block's going to be five and a half. It will scale it appropriately. So I'm going to come over here and find the line tool. And I'm going to draw, click at the bottom corner, the bottom left, and click on the upper right corner. Then I'm going to come to the little paintbrush tool. I'm going to choose a color, actually blue. I'm gonna put blue there. I'm gonna put orange here. And then file, save, and file, exit. And I now have a half square triangle block. But now we need to make the flying goose block. So I'm gonna do file new and new block. I'm assuming it's called flying goose because there's only one of them. And if you have more, they're flying geese. I don't know. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to grab my line tool. I'm going to find the five inch mark. Click on the left. Click on the right. And now I need to make the flying goose. Click on the upper left corner. Find the center of the center line. Click. I'm going to click there again and click up. So then grab my paintbrush. I'm going to put blue here. I'm going to put a different blue there. And it doesn't really matter what colors you use. You're just trying to differentiate or show the different patches. So I'm going to put yellow there. And I'm going to save it. So file, save, and then file, exit. So I have the two blocks I need because the only other block that this whole, or the only other piece this whole block uses, or the whole thing, is a square and the software has that. So I'm gonna close this out and then over here in my library, if your library is not open, it is the book over on the left-hand side, it turns it on and off. I'm going to click on the minus sign next to main block so I can find my Rachel category. 
and I just click on the plus sign so I can find my quilter's building blocks, plus sign there, and I can find these. So I can grab these and I'm just clicking on them and then I'm clicking in the box I want them to be. They're not going the right directions and I know that and I'm gonna fix it because I like to make one block first with all the different units and then copy and paste the block because why do I wanna go and rotate things a whole bunch when I can just do it once and then copy paste. So now I'm gonna grab my arrow. I'm gonna grab this one right here and I'm gonna rotate. Grab this one and rotate twice. Grab this one and I'm actually going to rotate right. So I'm gonna right click. And if you don't rotate it the right direction, that's fine. You just keep going until it's doing what you want it to do. So there's my block. I'm gonna click and drag to select everything. I'm gonna do edit copy. I'm gonna click over on the upper left corner of where I want it. Edit paste. Edit paste. I can also click on the paste icon. You can also use your shortcut keys um, if you know the keyboard shortcut for paste. Okay, so I have my blocks. Now I am using fabric that I have in my um, stash. So I'm mostly using fat quarters that I already have and then I have my background fabrics um, I had yardage of. Actually, the star fabric I had exactly a yard of and I needed 37 inches, so I'm making it work, but um, it is definitely a uh, challenge. It's always nice to have a challenge. So let's figure out where we want our different colors to go. So I'm gonna cheat and look at a picture of my finished quilt that I've already made except I didn't do it on this computer so I could do fabrics honestly I could import my fabrics and see what they look like I didn't do that and I'm not going to um, with something like this which I'm just kind of throwing together um, I am lazy and I don't do that as often if I'm not really sure about the fabrics, I might import them, but in this case, I'm just going to uh, use colors so I get an idea. So what I am did, I'm going to undo that because that happened really fast. So I'm holding control down on my keyboard and it makes everything, every patch that's the same, the color that I just clicked with. So I'm making all of the, what I call the background area, dark blue, because that's kind of the color of my star fabric. But then I have an even darker blue, which, let's see, let's try that one, that is used, oops, and I misclicked. If you misclick, you can always hit undo. And that made me realize that the first dark blue I used was, there's not enough contrast there. There honestly is not a whole bunch of contrast on the block itself. I think when the quilt's completely put together, there will be more, but uh, I could have chosen a different background color or a different uh, center color. Now I want this dark color in the center of the blocks, but I am not using it. So I'm gonna grab the eyedropper, click on the color down here. This is all the colors I've used. Back to the paintbrush, I'm gonna hold control and put it right in the middle. Now I want different colored blocks um, because you can't make nine blocks out of two fat quarters. Um, you can make three blocks out of two fat quarters, but, and that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start with this one. This one is going to be a yellows. So I'm just gonna scroll up and I'm actually gonna go to mid first and I'm gonna find an orange because the two colors that I used, and I'm just trying to find an orange I like, um, the two colors that I used, and that's not very different from that, uh, are yellow and orange for this block. And I'm not using control because I don't want all of the blocks to be the same color. And then I'm going to grab a yellow, and I'm actually going to go to light because the idea was that the center ring should be darker than the half square triangles that kind of 
fold over onto it. So there's my orange and yellows. They don't look that different, but now I'm going to go to purple. So I'm going to go back to mid because that lets me have a little bit of definition easily. I'm going to grab a purple and the purples. Oh, that matches so well. We are not going to do that. Um, let's use a red purple. There we go. Because in this part, it's also to me about making sure I can see what I'm doing or what I was planning on doing. I do change things halfway through, but it's good to know what I was thinking. And if I just go to light and I start clicking, it will give me the light tone of the same color. And sometimes there's enough difference that you can use it and sometimes it's better to go find another one. So now I have green, so I'm going to go back to mids and find a green. That's a pretty green. And what I was trying to do here with placement was make it where no two colors were touching each other um, horizontally or vertically. So I have the diagonal yellows but the um and they're allowed to touch each other diagonally they're just not allowed to be right next to each other okay so i have my quilt designed using basically the same colors i used before and so now i need to put embroidery in so i'm going to click on um, the embroidery window icon and it's going to flash a little bit and it's going to come to this window and it says designs in untitled and that's important. If it does not say design and untitle, it is not going to work. <laughs> if I come over to design one and I put something here, it's not going to go into quilter. If I do file open, it's not going to go into quilter. I have to use insert embroidery. So I'm going to click on insert embroidery and then navigate to my design collection. Um, my all systems glow. I'm going to tell it that I just want to look at art files because then I won't see a whole bunch of uh, the same one over and over again. And I'm going to start with design nine, which is my son. I'm going to open it. And I'm going to file, save and return. And now it's up in the corner. I'm going to hold my control key down, click on the center circle or center circle, the center square right here. And we're going to do align centers. And we're going to repeat that. So insert embroidery or not insert embroidery window, insert embroidery, Design 10, open, file, save and return, hold down control, click on the center, align centers, click off. It's important to click off if you have an embroidery design selected when you um, click on the embroidery window, it will reopen that embroidery design to be edited, which is good because sometimes you do need to change things. Can I go to 11, file, save and return? Controlled, held down, click on the center, align centers. Click off, embroidery window, insert embroidery, design 12, which is our earth, file, save and return, click in the center, um, align centers. Click off, embroidery window, insert embroidery, design 12, not 12, we've already done 12. It's always good to have a preview window. Design 13, we're going to open that. File, save and return. Hold down control and click in the center. Align centers, click off. Embroidery window. Insert, I think we're on 14. 14, yes. Open. And yes, I will get off at some point. Hold control, click in the center. Align centers, click off. Embroidery window. Insert embroidery, 15. Now this is the one that's gonna have the most issues. So if I look down at the bottom, this design is 5.55 wide. And I am supposed to be doing a five and a half finished block. And so this is bigger than I'm going for. So what I'm actually going to do as well, um, well, first, let me show you what I did, but first I did save and return, did what I always do, click over here, align centers. And then I looked at it. And I'm like, wait, 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 you're touching. You are not allowed to touch, no touching the outside of the block. So I double clicked on it, which will open 
the um, design back up. And I'm going to do insert embroidery again, except this time I'm going to go to quilters building blocks and there is one in here. I don't remember what number it is, which is there design 10. I'm going to open it. And with this particular design, all I have to do is change the width or the height with proportional scaling locked to 5.5 and it will change appropriately. It is um, centered. My position X and Y is zero. And then I can click on my planet. I'm going to click on it again. I have my rotation handles and it's just going to be rotated like an extra five degrees. And that should hopefully give me enough space um, to stitch this out. Wait, my finished block is five and a half. This is actually going to be 5.75. I'll explain later what that means, but I know this is right. Um, so now I can do file, save and return. I will have to recenter it. So I'm going to hold control and click on my quilt block and do the align centers. The little, the, the square will be on the outside. I'm going to ignore it for now because I know it doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to go back to show all so you can see everything. Um, embroidery window. I have completely forgot. Whoa. Okay, so I'm not sure if I clicked in the wrong place or what, but all I had to do was come down and click on my window for my embroidery software and it came back and I'm in design and untitled, so I'm fine. Insert embroidery. I've completely forgot. Oh, this is the wrong system. Um, a wrong uh, embroidery collection. There we go. So I'm just going to go down till I find a new planet. I'm going to open it, file, save and return, center it, and one more. Oh, hey, guess who didn't click off? We don't want to insert. We're going to um, save and return, click off, click on the embroidery window, insert embroidery, find the new one, open it, file, save and return. Ah. Oh, and I clicked on the wrong block and I just click on it again with control held down and it will deselect because control selects or deselects depending on what it needs to do. So at this point I have my quilt designed and I'd be ready to start sewing it. I can do, I can print this multiple ways. So if I go to print preview, one of the things I like to do is do the whole quilt and say, okay, so I could just print out this whole quilt and then I would have um, a picture or a diagram to show me what I'm planning on doing. So I don't have to remember or have a phone picture on my phone. That's uh, hard to find because there's too many pictures of my baby. Um, I'm going to close that. Uh, you can also go to print preview and you can go to blocks and say, okay. And it's going to tell you which blocks and gives you a little preview of them. But these aren't going to be the proper size. Like they're the proper size, but they're not the proper size for what we're going to do because we are piecing in the hoop. Um, and one, th another thing it will show you is yardage don't trust this quite. Um, so like one thing it's saying is, um, I need 12 inches of the pink or the dark pink or 12 inches of all the different dark colors. Um, 48 inches of this one and 28 inches of that one, which that doesn't seem right. I will give you what I actually used in my PowerPoint. We're going to close that. So like I said, the quilt blocks were not the right size. So we're going to quickly go on a little tangent about how to resize tiling scenes. And then we'll look at making our flying goose block with the rectangle. Um, I know some people are very accomplished piecers and they could just do this themselves. They don't have to use piecing in the hoop. For me, it is a way to make it perfect every time because I could do this traditionally. I can do it faster and with less um, tears in the hoop just because although I have been around quilting and done quilting for a long time, I usually stick with big squares and I don't uh, do triangles if I can help it. So we would save this. So file, save as, 
And then I just called this all systems glow. Um, quote. I'm going to put it in the, my file folder for this. Um, I like to say whatever. If I'm using a collection called Blooming Baskets, it's my Blooming Baskets quilt. To me, even though I'm using Quilters Building Blocks and All Systems Glow, what's really going to show is the All Systems Glow quilt. So I'm going to save it. Uh, oh, one more thing before we leave. the um, This block here, which I believe is supposed to be Jupiter, they do not name their planets in this collection. Um, it's just planet one through nine. And I have a feeling they did that because they're more cartoonish than anything, but they do correlate heavily towards um, the planets in our solar system, apart from Planet Nine, since uh, it was, you know, decided that it was a was something else. It wasn't a planet. Pluto is not a planet, apparently. Um, but this, I would probably send this, like open it and then hit my write to card slash machine. Um, we're going to send all at this point. Now, this will actually have a hissy fit because even though it thinks I have a sewing machine hooked up, I do not. And I don't have a USB stick plugged in either. But I would go ahead and send this to my USB stick from here because it's at the correct angle. Um, so there's that. Uh, so we're going to exit out of this. So file, save and return. And I'm going to actually exit out of the quilter as well. Um, you do want to exit out of the quilter as its own thing because if you don't and you close your embroidery software down, it will automatically close your quilter program. Um, the quilter program cannot um, be open without the embroidery software. So we're going to have a little segue and we're going to talk about how to um, resize tiling seams. And it's the same concept for how to resize the um, blocks in uh, for our culture's building blocks, but I'm going to use a different embroidery collection because I can. So have my software open. I am going to use the insert feature. So I'm going to insert embroidery and I'm going to use fresh poppies tiling scene. This is a great one to start with because it only has um, 10 tiles. Some of the tiling scenes have quite a few. This one just has 10. So I'm going to open it and it fits perfectly in my large oval hoop. And if I look at this a little closer and hit zero on my keyboard, which is show all, I have a lot of stitching that's outside of my seam line. This black box is the seam line. So what we want to do is we're going to hold down alt because the design is grouped. I can tell it's grouped because it has a little icon right here and also normally comes in grouped. I'm going to select the seam stitch and I can see that uh, for this collection the width and height is supposed to be 4.75. The height's a little bit smaller than that but we're just going to go with it. It is minusculely smaller and it doesn't matter. That's what we're going with. So I'm going to change my width and we're going to decide that I want to have this in a midi hoop and the largest it can be and fit in the midi hoop is 5.5 .5 inches so I'm going to change my width to 5.5 but I am not pressing enter. Instead, I am taking note of this percent change here. Um, and I am going to cheat and use my keyboard shortcut. So I highlight it, I'm gonna do control C. So I just copied that number. So it needs to be 115.79% larger to get to five and a half inches. So I'm gonna hit escape to turn that off because I don't wanna resize right now. I'm going to go ahead and right click on my show hoop icon and I'm going to change to a midi hoop so you can see that it fits. I'm going to click on anything, any of the stitching because I want to select everything. I'm going to highlight my percentage and I'm going to do control V, which is paste, or you just type in the number, the percentage that you noted and hit enter. And it has enlarged everything the exact size to fit in the midi hoop and you'll end up with a slightly larger design. Now, if they provide any applique patterns or silhouette cutting things um, or electronic cutting machine files, those will not work on this because it's 115% bigger. So in this case, you would have to probably create your own files again, uh, which this is um, where I go crazy and 
go off of my handouts that I have made. Um, so to make a file for cutting out, I'd again hold down the Alt key and I'd click on the black stitching that is my applique line and hit the convert button. And I probably should have opened Artwork Canvas before we started, but since now I'm going on a tangent, which I am so good at, we get to wait. Luckily, this computer is faster than my laptop I teach at, use at the store. I'm going to turn off um, stitches. So that's a big zigzag here. This is my applique line. So if I wanted to hand cut this out, I could print it. To do that, I'd go to File, Print. It's going to pull up the print dialog box. And I want to go to Layout, and I want to make sure it says As in Document, because that means it will not resize it, because we do not want it resized. And you just choose whichever printer that you want. So it's trying to go to my home printer. And you click print and you'd be good to go to cut it out. Um, hi Sherry and Patty. So that's one way to do it. Uh, you could also copy and paste this into either um, the design work software to make a cut work file or into um, the only one I know about is Silhouette. You could paste this into Silhouette and make a an, uh, cutting file that way. You can also save this as an SVG. So I could go to File, Export, change this from a P, um, PDF to an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. And I could go ahead and export that. It's gonna ask me lots of things. A lot of times I just kind of go like, yeah, sure. I'm just gonna leave it at defaults. Um, say okay, it's now exported as an SVG so I can pull it into whatever electronic cutting machine software I have. Now if I do this, I should have saved it before I converted. I can hit undo and you might have to hit undo twice. And if there's nothing on the page, it will come back here. Um, because if you keep that converted to a picture, it will not stitch. And if it doesn't stitch, you're not going to have a placement line for your applique fabric, which would be not fun. So that's in general how to resize a tiling design. I do have a handout on how to do that using this design. It will be uh, posted on our website, BerninaOKC.com, in the coming days. Because I have another handout and it's not done. Uh, but this one is. So that's how you resize. So let's look at how we can make that block that is a flying goose block and a rectangle. So to do that, I'm going to click on a new blank design because I already have my software open. I need to calibrate my screen because it thinks I'm on a bigger screen than I actually am. And I want to insert my flying goose block. And it is design number two. So I have that. And then I'm going to insert the rectangle because the collection has both the goose and the rectangle. They just don't have them combined. And I don't know why we can't. I have stitched plenty of these blocks out now. And we can definitely put them together. So we're going to put um, this one. This one's actually a square with two rectangles on it. We're just going to make one of the rectangles a goose instead. So it's really difficult to see what's going on. I'm actually going to turn my hoop off because there's a lot going on here. But I'm going to click on the diagonal lines because I know that has to be my flying goose geese block. Has to be that block. Um, you know, the more times you say something, the weirder it is to say it. But anyways, what we want to do is we want to rotate this 180 degrees because that is how it is in the quilt. And then we're gonna change the position. Now I just gave you the position numbers because that's gonna be easier. But basically what I'm doing is I'm going to move it so that the top of this block meets the top of that block. So I'm gonna change position X to zero. I hit the tab key and then I'm gonna posi change position Y to 1.059 and hit enter. And if I zoom in, they are perfectly on top of each other, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to hit zero on my keyboard so I can see everything again. Are basically perfectly on. Wait a second. Okay, now I'm going on another tangent. Okay, I'm going to ignore that part that's over there. So now I have both of them together. I need to do a teeny bit of modification because they did not mean for these two to be stitched together even though they can be. 
So I want to find this rectangle right here. I'm going to do show objects up at the top of my color film, hold down the alt key and click on this first rectangle and I'm going to delete it. So when you stitch one of these blocks out, the very first stitching is a, um, it's showing you where the block is, like it's showing you the entire block and it's also a placement line. I don't need to know where that rectangle is because it's going to show with the um, other design. So I'm going to get rid of it because I don't want it to stitch extra if I can help it. I want this to be as light as possible. I'm going to click on show objects again to turn it off. And I know it's off because I can see the one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, even though these look like they're the same colors, all the ones are the same colors, all the twos are the same color. Um, that is saying that there's a color break in between so the machine will stop so you can do something. So now I want to find the square with the line in the middle. So it's this one right here. It should be about the seventh block box. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have this one. This is actually my um, placement line showing where all my block goes for the rectangle block. I'm going to go ahead and change it to color number five because I don't want to merge with things. And because I want to mess with it a little bit more. And then I'm going to find this rectangle here. The last stitch of each design is a um, showing you where the edge of the block is and it tacks everything down. And it's also your cutting line for cutting the block out. And I don't need this one. So I'm going to hold the Alt key down, click on this uh, box and I'm going to hit delete. And the reason I made this one red is because if it was still color number one, it would merge with this diagonal line and it's not where I need it to be right now. So now I'm going to hold down alt again. And again, I'm using alt um, to select grouped objects. So I'm selecting just color number five, even though the rest of the objects are grouped with it. I'm going to click on move to start and then immediately click forward one object. So what this does is it's going to um, stitch this goo, uh, not the goo, <laughs> this triangle out first, and then it's going to stitch the rectangle. There will be a jump stitch in there. Um, if I really wanted to, if you really want to make this as clean as possible, you could re-digitize it so there's no d jump stitches. Um, yes, we do have black work run. Black work run would make it go over everything twice. I tried it. Um, so it would be kind of, you'd have to play with it a lot more. I find having a jump stitch in it going over one area twice easier to do to do than start re-digitizing something that works just fine. Um, so I have this color number five. I'm going to go ahead and make it color number one. And that's going to merge it with that triangle so that this is now my... This is what the block looks like and the placement line for my uh, uh, triangle. Uh, in my PowerPoint that we'll get to in a second, it will. I'm going to go over how this stitches out. So at this point, this could be stitched out exactly like it is, but we can also optimize it, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to zoom into the center here because this is where we want to play. Oh, wait, you know what? I talk about how to optimize, how to make this block. Oops, sorry the exact size um, that they used. We're gonna go ahead and resize it. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on the square. It's uh, five inches. I'm gonna change that to 5.75 because that's the biggest I can do in a MIDI hoop. And my computer is being special, 5.75. So it's 115%. That's something that's easy to um, Remember, I'm going to do edit, select all. I'm not just clicking because I do have two file or two blocks going on. I'm going to change it to 115, hit enter. And if I turn my MIDI hoop on, it fits perfectly. And with some not following instructions, I can make this a finished five and a half inch block. Anyways, back to making this perfect or optimizing it. We're going to zoom into the center and I'm going to hit escape so nothing is selected. And this line down here, we really don't want any stitching below it. So we're going to pull this diagonal stitching back. So I'm going to click on 
nope, that's not how I'm going to do it. I'm going to hold down Alt, click on this line right here, and I'm going to go to Reshape. I love Reshape. I can do so much with it. And I'm just going to click on the line, and this is with a left click, and it's going to add a node up here. And so then I can move my start point away, click on the node down here, and press delete, and it shortens the line very quick and easily. And if my software is behaving right now it is, I can just click on another line, click above the line I want to be above, to add a node, select the other node, delete. Excuse me for a second. Sorry, talking way more than I'm used to. Uh, okay, then we're going to select this last line. Ah, select the last line. Click. Delete the node. And then I have another line that was hiding under it. And I'm going to do basically the same thing. So now I don't have any stitch lines past this. And it will make it stitch out a lot better. I'm going to hit escape. To turn everything off. And this is a finished block that's ready to stitch, and it's the size I want for my quilt. Um, if I were to save this, I'm not actually going to save it because I'm a bad person. Um, and I have already have the block I need saved. Uh, a lot of times I will name it something like uh, the collection number, and then like uh, the size, and then what it is. So... If I wanted to make this fairly short, it'd be a flying rectangle. Okay, so I think that's all the software stuff we were going to go over. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. And see what it is. So what you'll actually want to cut, if you're going to do it piecing in the hoop, um, if you're piecing it your own way, you're going to have to figure this out yourself. Uh, so my blue stars, I have two six and three fourths inch squares that get cut diagonally um, one way. All of these are, if they're cut diagonally, they're only cut one way. Um, and then two five and a half inch squares cut diagonally. And then my blue batik, I need four four and a half inch squares and then one seven inch square. The seven inch square is the only square that does not get cut. Um, and then the light color, which in this case is yellow, is six and three fourths by four. And then the dark color, uh, which is the um, stars, the orange stars, uh, is a six and three fourths inch square. So how I came up with those numbers was similar to how I printed or how I could have printed the, um, the applique pattern for fresh poppies, where I just converted it. I convert the block itself. Actually, you know what? My software's still open. Back to the software. I would select everything. So save it first if you're going to do this. But select everything. Hit convert. And then wait. I'm not very patient. So I have my whole block. And then I would print this. So I do file print. Print it out. And then I use a ruler to measure how long my lines are. And I add an inch. Um... If you're not confident on your placement skills of placing things fairly accurately, like it's it's not crazy accurate, but you still have to be within an eighth of an inch or so. Oh, not even that. Sometimes I was a quarter inch away from where I was. But anyways, you have to be fairly good at placement or fairly confident at your placement. Um, but you can make things bigger. But this is what I cut out, kind of, mostly. Um, so that was for one block. So what I used, because I used fat quarters for part of it, I needed 37 inches of my blue stars, 31 inches of my dark blue, that's my background for my planets, three light fat quarters and three dark fat quarters, and it's important that your light fat quarters are cut in four inch strips by the 21 or 22, otherwise you can't get all of them out of it, just because of how it works because I almost miscut them, but I didn't, which is important. I miscut something else. Um, so this is what I used for this quilt. 
Um, it will probably end up with a border. I do like putting borders on my quilts, but I'm waiting till I have it all done and then I will figure out what color to do or what print is most likely it'll be a print. Um, so stitching. So the first thing you're gonna do if you're gonna stitch the blocks is you want a hoop stabilizer. And I'm really bad at following instructions, but uh, what OESD recommended is fusible poly mesh. And I definitely recommend a fusible stabilizer. It made it so much easier. Um, the first table runner or table topper I did, I used regular poly mesh and 505 spray and it worked okay. But um, personally, I don't like how it felt with the poly mesh behind because you don't take the poly mesh out. Poly mesh and uh, the stabilizer I used, they're both cutaway stabilizers. And so they're gonna stay in your final quilt. So what I chose to use because I thought, and I could be wrong, but I thought I remember when it came out that they were saying you could use it by itself if you did like a very light design, something that doesn't have a lot of stitches and that's fusible woven. And it's something I keep using in more and more of my quilts because it just gives the fabric a little bit more body and I like how that feels. Um, usually I just use it behind what I'm going to embroider. So um, if you watched um, Software Sampler for this month, I showed off my um, black background Baltimore album blocks. Or if you're a part of uh, the Bernina OKC Friends, um, I posted in there too. And behind those, I used Fusible Woven uh, because it just gives it a little bit more body. I feel it embroiders better. But um, so I didn't follow instructions. And so I used Fusible Woven on everything except the center block. And technically I used it on the center block. I just didn't hoop it. Um, but OESD recommends Fusible Poly Mesh. Um, in their live stream, they also recommended um, regular poly mesh if you don't have fusible, um, ultra clean and tear, or they had a um, educator use ultra clean and tear plus, which is sticky. So there's a lot of different things you can choose to use. I just like the fusible woven and it works for me. So hooped my stabilizer. I am using fusible woven in this picture and we're going to do the half square triangles first because to me the more you see how this works the more it makes sense it's basically paper piecing in the hoop so the first stitch is always the design and the placement line one so in this case the placement line is this diagonal line right here that you want to put your fabric over and i can't tell if you can see my cursor one second yes you can okay Now things aren't working. Come on. There we go. So then, and now I just zoomed in. You, This is always hooped until the very end. You place your first fabric, which is my blue stars, right side up so it overlaps the sewn lines. And the center line, it needs to overlap by about a quarter inch. It can overlap a bit more. Um, but you don't really want it to overlap less because then you won't have a quarter inch seam. For overlapping the outside edges, it depends on what you're planning on doing. So if you, and I didn't put a slide in this, so I'm just gonna talk about it. So if you follow their instructions, which as we've already kind of seen, I'm not very good at, but if you follow their instructions, you cut right outside the line that is stitched at the very end and you sew a quarter inch inside that line. And that's how a five inch block ends up being four and a half finished. Well, I made this block as big as it could go in my midi hoop. I did not want to do a bigger hoop because it would use way more stabilizer. Um, but I still wanted them to finish at five and a half. So what I'm doing is I am cutting the block an eighth of an inch away from the line and then sewing at a quarter inch. Um, I will talk more about that when we get to the last slide on how to sew half square triangles. So you want to fuse this in place, but you only want to fuse inside the sewn lines or inside the, I'm pointing at my screen and you can't see me point at my screen. Um, too used to doing this with the TV in this classroom. So the, the diagonal line that's right here, you don't really wanna fuse the bottom side to your fusible cause you're gonna trim it away in a second. So then you're gonna do another sewing. Um, in this case, we're gonna do a placement line number two. And you can see I was fairly accurate in my placement. Um, like not even a quarter inch difference but even then you want to go ahead and trim it away and uh, 
part of why we're doing this is in case, like this is a dark fabric, we don't want to show through the other fabric. So then you trim your first fabric close to your placement line. You put the long edge of your second fabric, in this case my orange stars, right side down. This is the paper piecing part along placement line two. You stitch the tack down line number two and you can see it's not perfect, but that's okay. All I care about is that it lies flat. Um, and some of my squares weren't cut perfectly either. So this is the seam line between your blue, my blue stars and my orange stars. You flip it open or you fold it open and I use my iron to get a nice crease there. Um, I'm using my petite press iron that I meant to put in the slideshow and I forgot. Um, but it's just a small iron and I use that. I did, and again, I'm pointing at my screen and that doesn't help. I did this, the line first. So I creased the seam open and then starting at the center, kind of ironed out. Um, the petite press has a fairly small head, not as small as a clover. It's a little bit bigger than that. And it helps um, hold everything down without getting fusible on it. Uh, if you don't use fusible um, stabilizer, you can also, uh, I used 505 in my first um, table runner, or you can tape it in place using uh, either tearaway tape or washaway tape from OESD, or planer's tape, or, you know, any tape that you've been using with embroidery. Although I do have more luck with the OESD products than um, the hardware products. Anyways, so then the last stitch is the stay stitch around the outside of the block. And this is where the trimming comes in. So on my blocks, I'm trimming an eighth of an inch away from this line and then sewing them together uh, just so I can have a slightly larger block. Um, with, uh, you don't want to sew, or you don't want to trim it a quarter inch away because you don't want to have to deal with this showing. Um, from personal experience, you really don't want that showing. It is a pain in the hiney to rip out stitches like this. Um, so make sure that you're at least sewing on the inside of it. Personally, I wouldn't do anything more than cutting like an eighth of an inch away and then sewing a quarter inch in. Um, but then afterwards, we're going to press it really well. Um, I would trim it first and then press it because then I can use my big iron. So let's look at the flying goose block. Um, which is a little bit more complicated. I started with the easy one. And if you want to start with the easy one, do half square triangles. They are the easiest thing. And I know I could probably make them faster using traditional methods, but I also know most of the time it would frustrate me slightly more because I would get just slightly off and I have issues. Um, so with this same kind of thing, we stitch the first lines, which is the design and placement line one. Then we put our fabric one, which is the blue stars, stars right side up. So it overlaps the sewn lines and it should overlap again, the inside lines by about a quarter of an inch. And you want to fuse that into place inside of the sewn lines. Then you're going to do placement line two, which I overlapped a lot more this time. That actually means it'll be a lot easier to trim away. I'm going to trim that as close to placement line two as I can but you don't want to cut through it because that's going to actually hold it in place as well so it doesn't move on you. Then I'm going to place a long edge of my fabric too, which is a blue batik right side down. Not that this has a right or wrong side, but right side down along placement line two. We're going to stitch our tack down line two, and that's the seam between our stars and uh, the blue batik. Pop it open, fuse it down. Um, do the placement line, which will be the other side, placement line three, trim it away. And I trimmed away my blue batik as well. Um, so I'm trimming both my blue batik and my blue stars. Mostly it's blue stars you want to get rid of, but I like to get rid of excess bulk if I can. Place the long side of fabric three right side down along placement line three. Um, stitch tack down line three. And this is your left seam between the blue stars and the blue batik fold it over and then I forgot to take a picture which is why this is two steps so you fold over and fuse it and then you stitch placement line four which is the placement line for our rectangle so I'm gonna definitely on this because my rectangle on this block is yellow trim as close as I can um, 
the little blue taggy here, I could have worked harder to get that away. Um, but I go, I went ahead and left it and it does have a little bit of a shadow underneath my yellow, but most people aren't going to see it. They really shouldn't be looking that closely at the quilt, in my opinion. So then I'm going to put my yellow rectangle right side down and I'm all the times I'm putting these down, I'm centering them on the sewn line, not necessarily on my fabric. I can see behind them. Um, so I'm putting that down, sewing my tack down line four, and this is our seam stitch to attack the, attach the rectangle to the flying goose block or geese block. Um, and then fold it down or open it up and everything, fuse it into place or tape it. And then you do your stay stitch around the outside. So it's very much doing the same thing over and over again. And um, once you get the hang of it, they go really fast. I did not time my how long it took me to do these, but um, one of them is a, that was for the table runner was a split quarter square triangle is what they called it. So it was a, one side was a half square triangle and the other side was a quarter square triangle. So it had another diagonal going through it. And it took me about eight minutes to make that block. Assuming I did not get interrupted by little people or a person. There's only one little person around. Um, so now the center block. Because there's only really three types of block in the blocks in this block. Or th actually, it should be center unit. Anyways, there's only three different things in this block. The overall block. So in this case, I'm hooping heavyweight tearaway. Because I know I'm going to have a fairly dense design in the center of it. And then I did put woven fusible to the back of my fabric to give it more body. And then on the stabilizer, like I have been doing, I stitched design and placement line one from the square that is in the collection. Then I placed my fabric one because that's what I'm using on everything. Um, oh, hey, guess who has a typo? It's not blue stars, it's blue batik. Put blue batik right side up so it overlaps the sewn lines. And then I fused it into place. It doesn't really need to be inside the lines. You know, I think I copied and pasted that and that makes no sense. I 505 that into place. That I need to change that before I put this up. Um, Cause I should have the PowerPoint as a download as well on BerninaOKC.com. But we're gonna 505 that into place. And then I'm gonna activate the basting function in my machine. And it's going to go back to the beginning of the design, but it's going to baste around the outside of it to hold everything into place. I'm going to then, it's going to want to stitch that design placement line again. And I'm going to go like, nope, don't need that. And so I'm just going to skip it and go right to my motif. So I skipped the first color, which is the placement line, and stitched out my center motif um, on it. And in this case, it had two colors. It's uh, yellow and glow in the dark. And then we'll do the stay stitch around the outside of the block. And honestly, I probably wouldn't be using white if um, I didn't wasn't taking pictures of this. I would use something that would blend in more, um, but still be visible enough I could use it to cut. And then we're going to trim around outside of the stay stitch and then uh, press it. You do want to use a press cloth if you're pressing this. You don't really want to press directly into um, embroidery if you can help it. So then what I did to finish it out, I laid all my blocks out to form the overall design and then pieced them together, which I'm not going to describe how to piece, um, or at least how to piece all these together. Uh, and then you do it eight more times with whatever colors you want. Oh, hey, I didn't put a thing at the end. Um, so at that point you have you have a quilt or if you only make one, you have a pillow because it is still a very good size block. Um, since it's 16 inches, I believe. I am mathing and I'm not mathing well. 16 and a half, I think. Well, I'm just gonna get a calculator out and then mess up the calculator. Keep messing up the calculator. 16 and a half inches finished. So could definitely be a pillow if you just want to play with it. Um, if you want something that um, might be a little less intense, uh, I highly recommend looking into OESD's Embroider Along that they did 
think it was two weeks ago. It's part of their Perfect Tips and Tricks series. Um, that they, they did a really great um, video on that. Um, but I think... Oh, there was one other thing I was going to show you. And I don't think I can because I don't think I have a simulator. Oh, hey, I have simulators installed. Yay! We'll go to the 880. Actually, no. Okay. I don't want to do 880 because I want to show you on... Um, one that has the cutting system. Allow access. Okay, hold on one sec. It wants me to give administration access. Okay. Um, so this is the simulator um, for the 590. I was embroidering on a 700, but this will be the same. But one thing you can do um, when I'm embroidering, especially piecing in the hoop, sometimes I want to pull my bobbin thread up and hold it so I get a very nice um, back so it looks nicer. And by default, the machine likes to suck the threads underneath, which is really great when you do something like the sun because the sun had a lot of jump stitches and it's very messy on the back. But that's okay. It's going inside the quilt. But if I want to pull my thread up, there's a way we can turn off where it will suck the thread down. So I'm going to hit my home button to find settings. Um, on my 700, I just can see my settings button. I'm going to go into embroidery settings. And I'm going to go into this not function. And I'm going to turn it off. So what this does um, is securing stitches. And if a design does not have securing stitches, it adds them in. Our design has securing system stitches. OESD always puts securing stitches in. Um, so if we turn this off, the cutter won't hold the thread and suck things down. Um, I should have had Noel explain better what it does. It has something to do with the cutter, but if I turn that off, it won't do it. Now, if I turn this off, it will also not do thread away. So when I got to doing my sun motif, I went in and turned it back on because I did not want to have to deal with jump stitches. I'd rather they get stuck to the back, but I wanted my piecing stitches to look pretty. So this is something you can turn off and on, and that should make it where you can pull your thread up and uh, start easily. So thank you all for watching. I hope this is not a one-off thing and I come up with more things to do. Um, and I hope you take what you're seeing and do your own thing because that's what I did. This is not what they intended at all to do except for maybe with the planet thing to make a um, quilt. They, I, they probably always think that people are going to use their designs to make quilts because that's what a lot of us do. Um, but they probably did not intend us to make something that was uh, bigger than they imagined or <laughs> putting things together. Um, but yeah, so thank y'all for watching. 